Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I have something special for you today. A few of you have requested that I put up a webcam or do something to basically follow me around in the shop for a day. Well, today's the day. No shop cam, but I have Brian the cameraman follow me around. So, come see what it's like for me to work in the shop as a technician for the day. So this is what I have on tap today. I have at least three vehicles that I'll be working on. All friends of mine, all people I've known for a long period of time. That said, this is what I have. I've got this 2005 uh, Nissan uh, Sentra, Ultima. I can't remember which one it is, but it's a 2005 Nissan. Uh, it's something that was in before. I did front brakes on it, and at that time I found it had a bad left rear wheel bearing, and the rear brakes were also needing help. It is here to get that work done, so we already know what's going on with that. I have another Honda Accord sitting outside that's also a friend of mine's son's car who goes away to college. Uh, and she has brought it to me because the air conditioning is not working. There's something going on with the exhaust and it needs an oil change. And then we have a lovely waiter that's coming in. Another friend of mine uh, has a 2005-ish uh, Toyota Corolla. It's his daughter's car. In fact, you might remember her other car from the Civic Engine series. Uh, now she's driving this Toyota. Anyway, there was a small little fender bender not long ago and it was in a few weeks ago and I replaced the radiator because the condenser had broken loose uh, from its mount and it rubbed into the radiator and it caused that to leak. Well, now apparently the condenser's leaking, so he's coming in so that we can replace that condenser. And that one he's going to wait on. So we've got to sort of juggle. I've already got the parts coming for this car, the Nissan. Now I need to get the Accord in, find out what's going on with that with the air conditioning and the exhaust, possibly do the oil change while we got it in here and then just keep the ball rolling because by then my condenser could show up and we'd have to start work on that. So it, it's a juggling, it's a balancing act. We got one lift. Sure, we have lots of space, but I want to try to utilize the lift as much as possible if I can. So here we go. Part of handling multiple jobs in a shop during a day or just working as a technician, it's not like working on the weekend and fixing your car, you got as much time as you want. You've only got so many hours in a day. So you try to organize things so that the stuff that you know might take a while, you do that first or you, you try to organize it so that you maximize the time that you have on the lift. Let's just put it that way. Sometimes there's some juggling involved. This one I need to check out. So let's figure it out, change the oil. Come to think of it, I was going to check out the exhaust and change the oil on this, but I forgot there's also an AC problem to check out. So what I think I'll do is I think I'll figure out what's going on with that. Last year I replaced an evaporator in this car and that was all I've done. So we'll see where it's at. First I'm gonna see if it even turns on. Warm air. Let's see if the fans come on. No fans. No AC compressor. <laughs> I'm checking to see if there's a charge in the system. There is. At least there's something. Now let's check some fuses. These are fans, but nothing for the AC, which is probably up under the dash. Here to control relay, AC clutch relay, seven and a half, number eight. Hook my gauges up, see how much pressure is actually in the system, if it's enough to even turn it on. I also put dye in when I put the evaporator in, so if there is a leak, then we should be able to find it relatively easily. Plenty of refrigerant in there. Now I'm going to see if a command is being sent to the compressor clutch or voltage is being sent to the compressor clutch to turn on. If there isn't, we need to find out why. But if there is, then we try the compressor clutch to see if uh, it is indeed bad. It's a process of elimination. 
Uh, and AC work is not for the faint at heart. There are so many things that can go wrong with AC work. It's uh, a lot of different systems coming together. And if the compressor doesn't kick on, the fans won't kick on, nothing will happen. I don't actually have to start it up and run it to get my fingers tangled up in belts. The AC is turned on right now. There's no power here. Kind of wondering about the pressure switch. I think it might be the fan timer. Hmm. We need more information. We need to track down an electrical diagram for this AC to try to figure out what goes where and what's where. And, but uh, this is looking like an electrical issue. Just have to get more information on that. Well, I think what they're talking about is this. forget the oil sticker the oil change didn't happen we know we have refrigerant we have the oil changed uh, I work on this car quite often and it's really easy to eyeball and see what kind of shape it's in so the rest of the stuff seems okay I just need to nail down whatever the electrical issue is uh, with this and I think that would be better suited not on the lift that way I can get in and out and I don't have to fight around the lift uh, to get it in and out so I'm going to swap these cars uh, bring the Nissan back over here because that needs the rear brakes and the wheel bearing call my parts people find out where that stuff is and see what the warranty is on this muffler because she thinks that it's going to be a warranty issue and I won't know the parts people will know we'll see might as well just keep these over here because I will be doing a condenser later So you, you'll be here in five minutes? Yeah. Perfect. I'll uh, have the, uh, I'll have everything open for you and you're still gonna wait on this, right? But yeah, talk about the timing. Yeah, we'll get the part replaced and then we have to evacuate the system and then it only takes a minute to charge, but it's gotta sit for like a half hour uh, after we evacuate everything. Ah, look at my ego. Dave does this to me every time. Keith, they help. Ah, you did it to me again. Now this is just parts replacement. Let's hope it goes well. All of this is a result of collision damage. And as I said, this was in here a very short time ago to get this radiator. Now I need to figure out how to get this condenser down in there without opening my radiator back up. And I was told the condenser was bad, so I did not diagnose this. Just, uh, we're just following orders today, at least on this one. One side. I win. And that was one crusty bolt. I'll take that over the wire wheel and clean it up before I 
install it. <sighs> Did that give me what I need? Yes. Yes, it did. Sounds like my other parts might be here. All right, what did you get for me? Brake pads, oil filters, and this guy. Got my fingers crossed, but it's like everything. Yes. Yes. I didn't check this last time and I got burned. Hey, you know. It's not you. No, sometimes these numbers just do not match. You know, I know. It, it says it does, but it doesn't. Well, we got some parts for that guy. I win. There's a problem right there. Customer supplied. Definitely gonna need these. It also looks like we'll need these. I don't see any dry rotting or anything on these old O-rings. Yes, it's a good idea to replace them. But if you don't have them and they didn't come with the new, whatever it is you're putting in, you tell me. That condenser in there. Now we got to suck it down. Okay, well I guess it doesn't work if it's all smashed over. Now let's go to lunch. Stocking shelves. I gotta sit here for like 20 minutes deleting junk emails. I get about 600 emails a day. <laughs> it's just kinda ridiculous. While we were having lunch, this whole thing was on a vacuum, but now I'm gonna close off the ports, turn off my vacuum pump, and then let it sit to see if it can hold a vacuum. If it can't hold a vacuum, then it can't hold the charge. I'll give it another five minutes. I'm curious as to what the warranty period is for your exhaust components. Hey Kayla, it's Eric. As far as the air conditioning goes, it's an electrical problem. Now, I haven't determined exactly what that electrical problem is yet. If I find the problem there, that'll solve a lot of problems, and then uh, maybe we'll be able to get that muffler done today. Same place it was when we left it 10 minutes ago. It hasn't moved at all. So it's been on there at least 15 minutes. Holds a vacuum. I'm charging it up and shipping it. I always forget to purge the hose. I'm not going to forget this time. That's why I wear gloves. I mean, it's not even, it's like 69 in the shop, so it's not going to be cooling all that much. I'm going to raise the RPMs a little.
I'd say we're good since we're going down to, that well, looked like 41 or 42. I'd say that's pretty good. It's out of here. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Take care, man. All right, well that takes care of the waiter. This is the other known quantity. I know exactly what it's getting. I now have the parts to do it. I'm gonna get these, this knocked out and ship it. It's got a wheel lock. Uh, I think it's anybody's guess where it is. We're in luck. So. Rubbing brakes, right? Bad wheel bearings, they make noise. <laughs> this one's pretty bad. Not to mention the brakes are also fried. But you'll see that there's no movement. So unlike, I've said this in the past, I've seen wheel bearings that are bad, that are completely silent, that you have movement with. A lot of people come to me and say, I just shake the wheel when I have a wheel bearing noise. Well, guess what? There's your wheel bearing noise. No movement. New parts. Our brake pads look correct. Oh, especially new, you wipe them off because they are coated with a rust inhibitor called Cosmoline. And if you don't wipe them off, and you can almost see the film here as compared to what I just did. I have been prompted by my director to remind you that this is not a detailed repair video. This is a day in the life of Eric the Car Guy at the shop, or a ride along, if you will, with Eric the Car Guy. So, if you're not getting the detail that you're normally accustomed to, apologies. But guess what? I told you in advance. You know what this is for. I'm gonna have to get violent. Take that. Got to back the parking brake shoes off. See why we're replacing it? Got kind of an idea for getting this bearing out. Magic bolts. That'll do. Take that. Ta da! Our old crusty bearing.
That's just the brakes rubbing. That'll go away. That's a bit more cooperative. Clean this up real quick too, while that's soaking in. That's what I was turning. Now this one wasn't all crusted up, so I didn't have to wire wheel it. I just had to wipe the old lubricant off of it. Silicone paste only on this. Way better. Let's pump up the brakes, top up the fluid, and ship it. We need to uh, restore his headlights. Well, what's going on is I've got your car finished. Yeah, the wheel bearing's done, and boy, was that bad. Rear brakes as well, and those are all cleaned and lubricated and should be moving like they should now. Uh, so actually, you have uh, four working brakes on the car now. Yeah, okay, see you then, bye-bye. All right, there's two done. Uh, we got the bird in hand, the, the low hanging fruit taken care of. Electrical issue on this car, which is causing the AC not to work. Sort of checked it out earlier, uh, determined that it was an electrical problem. Uh, I spoke to the owner and she reminded me that it wasn't that long ago where the inner fender liner on this side had been ripped down and along with it, a wiring harness that got tangled up in the suspension that I don't believe was ever properly repaired. Our problem could be where this wiring harness is. And I've always wanted to get a look at it anyway to figure out how it was repaired. This car spends its time in Oklahoma, so it's far away from where I'm at. Anyway, get a look at that and see if that's the source of our problem. I guess we've been doing a bit of off-roading with this. Yeah. Yeah, so we just covered this whole thing with tape. What's under this tape? I think what I'll do is I'll start it up, <clears throat> turn the air on, Fiddle with these wires. If the air comes on, I know I'm onto something. If it doesn't, well, maybe it's time for me to look elsewhere.
I don't really see anything that goes to the AC here. Uh, now it gets interesting. I need to find a wiring diagram for that 97 Accord for the AC. <laughs> Can't read it. Uh. Uh, maybe I got a lead on what might be happening. One of the hardest things to do with electrical diagnosis is to find good information. Uh, and I have access to the OE service manuals or electrical troubleshooting manuals in the case of Hondas. Uh, thing is, uh, it was rather difficult trying to get to that information. These are my relays for the condenser fan and the uh, AC compressor clutch. And that's what I'm trying to work here. I'm trying to figure out which one is which. Once I've made that determination, I'm gonna see if it's getting the signals it's supposed to get. Because really, what turns it on is the computer, and that's what I'm worried about with the electrical damage that was over here. And she also said that there was a lot of uh, lights on the dash whenever that happened, that damage to that wiring harness. I'm wondering if something back fed the computer or maybe fried something, fried a diode in there that controls this. If that happened, I, I have had to replace computers in the past to fix the AC. It's weird, but it does happen. <sighs> computers underneath the passenger floorboard. With this on the ground, it'd be great, but it's not on the ground and it's not great. Actually, what you see me do is all the troubleshooting up to the point of testing at the computer. So let's test at the computer. <sighs> Battery voltage, okay. Good there. It'd be really great if you could give me the wire colors, guys. But that one, if I'm reading it correctly, should have battery voltage, and no beep means not battery voltage. I wonder if those are both the same wire. I suppose we could find out easy enough by checking the continuity between this and the other connector. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna just back probe this a little bit, see if I get the same reading. I would love to know where this wire goes. So this says, all right, well, where's the AC diode? That would be good to know. It's off the green wire from the condenser fan relay. Red, white goes to the ECM, PCM. Follow the green wire from the condenser fan relay, I suppose. Where are you, AC diode? And there is much rejoicing. I got a ground. So the diode's not bad. Diode's good. diode not the problem <sighs> but I believe there is a problem with that there's a voltage drop in that wire that's not allowing it to do its thing and then finding that well well <laughs> according to the troubleshooting if you don't have battery voltage at the uh, red white wire, which I have less than battery voltage, I don't know exactly how much, it says that you need to repair the open between the diode and the PCM. So right now what I've got is the PCM unplugged, the diode unplugged, and I'm gonna do a resistance check on that wire that goes between there. Should be no resistance. If I find resistance, I know there's an issue with that wire. 
Well, I'm either not on the right wire, not connected here somewhere, or I'm not even on the AC diode. Who knows? <laughs> That looks like that green wire. Kind of going all over the place. Oh, 11.27. So I got a one volt drop. And I bet you that's coming out of that fan timer because it's not sending full voltage. According to this wiring diagram for the condenser fan relay, which I was just checking here, there's only 11 voltage and some change coming out of this green wire. I'm gonna put Humpty Dumpty back together again and repair this wiring, whatever. But uh, I'll have to call tomorrow. It's too late to find out a price on that fan control module, but, but yeah, we're gonna look for one of those to solve the AC problem here in this Accord and be done with it. Because as you can see, it's been kind of a long day. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to cut the grass tonight because I'm feeling a little flat right now. Probably should turn this off. Take care of your stuff very well. You put it back every day. You don't never, you don't ever leave it out. Uh, it depends. We had that big job with that transmission job. I left it out, but for the most part, yeah. And and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, you know, I like to I like to keep my tools in good order, but also, especially when you work on multiple vehicles like today, there's always a chance you left something somewhere. And if you ship a car or you ship a vehicle before you put your tools away, then you come to find when you're putting stuff away that something's not there, well, then your tools are halfway down the road. So the other part of it is really just to try to keep a running tally, a stock of what I have, don't have, so that, you know, I know if something's here or not. But yeah, I, I worked really hard for this collection of tools and I still respect them. <laughs> Some days I throw them, <laughs> but I still, I still care about them. I still, you know, I still rely on them. So yeah, I want to do what I can to keep them in good order. Well, 
I didn't get a chance to cut the grass, but I'm leaving the weed eater here for one I do, which I might possibly do later this week. We fixed two, diagnosed another. We know where we need to go with that one. It needs a muffler and a fan timer, I believe. So uh, we'll bring that one back in another day. They don't always get done every day, and I can't exactly say that every day is typical, so it's hard to call this a typical day, but it's been about eight hours, and this was this is pretty much the day-to-day -day of what I do when I'm here working at the shop this way. So it's very different than when videos are produced. This was just, this is what I do. You were curious? Here you go. Anyway, if you have automotive questions, airatthecarguide.com is where I ask that you go. Welcome video there to tell you about stuff to help you. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, also Instagram. And I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'm going to go home. See you next time.